Good afternoon. Miriwe. Mrahonez. I can't hear you. Mwarushe, mwananiwe. You need to stand up a bit, maybe a few seconds. All right. How do we stretch? Can you choose one person to help us with stretching? Maybe table one, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Table five, can you designate someone? Okay, you can, you can come together. So, 25 seconds, <laughs> maybe one minute. All right, the floor is yours. Yeah. So since we were sitting and we were all looking at our phones and books, so what we need to do is just flexion, extension, rotation, lateral flexion, All right, thank you. Uh, thank you, Minister, for inviting us. And uh, CEO, all leaders, I've seen many people from different institutions, uh, public, private, civil society, faith-based organizations, researchers, and, uh, and others that uh, we are probably following us online. Um, thank you also media uh, community representatives. As Minister of Health, we want to make sure we make our contribution to a healthy, happy, a safer community. That is part of our, our mission as a sector. And um, it has been already mentioned. We've seen data, we've seen numbers. Uh, it's probably the time to go back and be the driver of changes and make sure we, we do what we say, and what we commit. So from commitment into action, uh, we should start from what we've seen now with uh, our two volunteers, um, who are happy actually to be experts in this field um, from their background and training. So if you had time, they would have shared more of this. So I want just to mention a few things. I'll be very brief. Some people are already looking for lunch, healthy lunch. Number one. You have, you have cars, I've seen, I've seen the parking, the parking is almost full. You, you, you drove to this place and you check on your vehicles in your cars every morning for good drivers, of course. Um, and if you don't, someone will check on your cars, on your vehicles on the road. And sometimes you receive fines if you don't behave or if you don't uh, follow the, uh, the rules, traffic roads, uh, regressions. These are vehicles. These are things that can break. And if they're not falling down and it's okay, you, you're safe. At least lives of people can be okay. But why do we check on cars and vehicles? And we make sure we enforce that. And we don't check on our ourselves as, as uh, the owners of those vehicles, for those who have cars, for those, even those who are using public transport, it's the same. We check on cars, we have car inspection centers, but for ourselves, our own lives, we don't do regular checks. If we don't do that, we don't have someone who will enforce that and make sure you have blood, high blood pressure, like you've seen on the slides. You have, um, what else, uh, high uh, glycemia. And no one is enforcing that check. So it's a problem. 
If your car is, has not gone into inspection, vehicle inspection control, it's renew, not renewed every year, someone will stop you on the road and you have to make sure it's cleared and it's, and it's done. But if you haven't checked your blood, high blood pressure and so on, your cancer markers, many, many things you can check. No one is stopping you and check why you didn't do this ABCD. Yet, it's about life. It can be also sudden death or certain uh, level of disability that will happen because that check hasn't happened, then something like an uh, engine break. It's so the same. Our brains, our engine to function, to think. Um, so that is the challenge number one. Who has to do that? Most of responsible institutions and people are in this room. So what are we doing from here? Oh, it's a day like another day of celebration. Then we go back. Same speech, same commitment. What are we going to do after this meeting? So we have to go back, change our policies, change our guidelines or procedures, SOPs. At least that is easy for us as leaders uh, in different institutions. Put in place policies, guidelines. And the next step that the panel talked about was more about implementation and enforcement. That is another step. At least we do what is easy for, for us now. So now on the side of implementation also comes from you or we understanding that it's, we believe it's, it's the right thing to do. So Deputy Deja of RBC outlined the, what we should do. There's a number of liters of water you have to take daily. There are things you have to check. Dr. Francois presented. Um, we know that stress is not good. We know that healthy eating is the best. So we know all the things we have to do. And of course, checkups. On the side of medical and health, also look at, are we telling people are we giving them the right information? Or are we gi give, doing it extensively so that they understand everyone has to check on his or her own health? So, at least we commit on that. Let me move on the side of stress and uh, occupational health where we, where we work. So there is a difference between working hard and getting things done. Sometimes we confuse that working long hours is equals getting work done or equals results. It's actually, actually wrong. Staying long hours at work can be as destructive as actually getting less low results because your brain can't sustain such long hours. Our brain is created, is formed that within two hours of concentration, after one minute after two hours, the curve starts to go down. So if you sit four or five hours on a computer trying to finish the work without a break, be sure that the quality of what you're working on is going to be low or you're killing yourself slowly and you're killing the institution slowly and the nation as well. So we should move from working hard, which is working long hours mainly, to working smart. Working smart is being strategic. Look at the results. What do we need to achieve? How do we get there? It can take someone one hour a day as far as you achieve that result at the end of the week. So how do we move from procrastination? I'm, I'm sure you've heard about procrastination. You'll see 
you probably have in your offices people who always run around, spreading stress, showing that things are being done, and sometimes creating chaos and panic. And at the end, you see what happened, what she or he has helped us to achieve. So do that homework. You will find these examples of people. And sometimes when they are leaders, it is worse. When leaders are creating that kind of chaotic kind of working conditions, putting everyone under pressure, you check if the result will be higher than things that are organized, well planned, and you check on the results, make sure everyone is doing his or her own job. I also recommend that you go back and read a book that one of my favorite books I read, I read uh, many, many times called 80-20 Principles. 80-20 Principles. It's available in uh, libraries in Kigali. Most, m many people may have read that. It's a combination of many studies that were done over the years that 80% of result we obtain, of achievement we obtain, are coming from 20% of work of investment. Time invested, even sometimes of money invested. So you will find that people who are achieving 8% of 100 things have actually invested 20% of their time. If you do the opposite, trying to achieve everything, to do everything, you're likely going to achieve 20% of the outcome because you've sent forces and energy in the wrong place. So experience that. You will tell me maybe when we meet again. And unfortunately, even when we know it, we end up running from meeting to a meeting, sitting long hours, forgetting to stand. We know it's, it's important. When you sit, your organs are compressed, the veins and arteries are not flowing blood correctly. So that is anatomy, even doctors know. But what we do is always different. So that is uh, message uh, number, number three. Message number four is what we eat what we eat, how we move. Um, unfortunately, some of our elements in our culture have been pushing us to do things that we know are not correct, trying to keep the culture because culture sometimes is taboo, sometimes yeah, generations differences. You want to do what your grandfathers and parents have been doing. And let me use two examples, drinking milk. We, I mean, at least for those who are in the medical field, we know that there is an amount of milk that your body can sustain. It is unnecessary milk that you should not be drinking daily. But we have the culture of feeding ourselves and even our kids. Take that milk, mumu and another one, another one. Even if you go to visit our uncles and, and uh, uh, family members, there's that thing of mumu and jirayand. Until umaze changwa. So, and we know the consequence of consuming that amount of milk may not be imminent, but it's going to destroy your body. And the result is what you've seen on the slide. I was surprised to see 67% of people sitting in this room randomly have abnormal body mass index, which means they have unnecessary weight they are carrying with themselves. It's, it's, it's all of us. These are facts. Even this sample, young people. So the results are showing that even these people who know what to do, who know safety, you are the best sample of people who should be doing good things. Uh, showing the result we've seen. What does it mean? It means what we are discussing, what we are talking about, is not what we're doing. In simple words, this is what it means. We're feeding. 
tumubona ku mashuri ni primary schools kuna abana bafite obesity obesity mu bana mu byuko kabije abana bato ni kibazo gikomeye ubu ngo abana badafite obesity ni babandi handi tukize tukiri bato twagendaga amasaha abiri namaguru so abana bacu the kids we are raising especially in the cities in urban centers turabagaburira na food because this is what we eat this is what we are eating um, let me take another example. Beer. Nzoga. 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 The consumption of alcohol. I thought, uh, I think Francois mentioned, showed you the study results. People are drinking too much alcohol that even the liver, the liver, umijima murauzi, atarawaganga. It's the biggest organ uh, in the abdomen. The second biggest after the, the skin. So the liver is supposed to clean the body. It absorbs things, alcohol, drugs. It's the cleaner. It's like uh, the wastewater treatment system of our body. That's the liver. So the more alcohol, drugs, um, oil, fats. The liver is trying to clean, make some stock. It keeps some stock for you. Um, and it, it, it rejects other things like nyand. Uh, but when it's overwhelmed, when it's overwhelmed, it will make you get sick. Uzarguar. Hmm? Imagine if the wastewater treatment it's full and it can't work. There's nothing happened in the household or the institutions. So our liver is overwhelmed by alcohol that we are consuming and over-consuming. So becoming cultural, it's okay. Then um, you can't sustain that pressure on your organs, on your body for, for years. And now we are living longer. 70 years, we are projecting actually in the next 10 years, we may live even 8 years. Life expectancy for Rwandans and people in Rwanda, it's, it's projected to be above 8 years in the next 10 years. In developed countries, it's between 75, 85. A few countries, I think Japan, uh, Switzerland, there are a few that goes up slightly above 85 life expectancy. So we're reaching that top level of life expectancy. And at your age, if I screen with my eyes, I would say that um, probably you are at the, on average, at the halfway of the, your life expectancy, or even lower, which means half of your life is still ahead to be experienced, which means you have to keep your body as safe, as healthy as possible, because you will need it for the next 40 years or 30 years. There is no replacement, there is no spare part for our body. So mainly, we fix a few things, organs, can do some operations, medicine, and you can't replace a whole part of an entire body. So the, the you of today is the you of the next 10, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, we expect to see. Your children, your grandchildren expect to see. So the better you keep you, your health, you healthy, eating well, taking care of yourself, it's not for you at the end. It's for all of us. We need to see you healthy, happy, strong, contributing to the development of this country. I think if we put it in that context, it will probably change our mindset that if you have five bottles of alcohol proposed to you by a friend, actually this should not be a friend because he's killing you slowly. Kandungu, the best friend is the one who buy you more beers or more work. That is a cultural aspect. That is why I refer to the culture. I'm not against the culture. But there are good things in our culture, but also there are bad things that we should expose in this kind of events and fora. So now, to conclude, I think we need to agree on 
things we, we're going to practice and do um, consistently. Sometimes we're excited about a meeting when we go to Yemuri at dinner, then things we forget. Uh, even the breakfast we had was not aligned to this particular meeting. I saw people having things, so I'm not accusing anyone, and they haven't. But uh, if you look at the setup itself, it shows you why we are here and why this result came out like this. So, so I think at least we get this mes message back, start with your office, start with your institution. If you can change even your institution, policies, your children, your family, yourself, do some change. If small changes combined bring a bigger change, it will be an, an, a new era of building a strong community and a strong nation. So I don't have any other thing to add other than uh, wishing you a big change and being the drivers of change so that we uh, walk the talk and we don't delay something good if we can do it right now. Thank you so much, Murakoze. Musimizi.